ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Amen, 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 amen. Be given unto the Lord our God, our Savior. Amen. 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 Can you test him, please? Test him, please. The time is going. The Zoom is just for one hour. Please test him.
Jesus said your request. Now he'll be speaking to us today, being the next Sunday in the series of this Thanksgiving service directed by God. Amen. We are having on the line now a person of evangelical life. You can be here now. We minister to us from U.S. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As you were told, my name is Evangelist Esther Dia. I am, I am ministering from USA, New York. I congratulate you on the on your Thanksgiving program as um, directed by the Lord. And I know that at the end of this program, there shall be uncountable thanksgiving and testimonies in, the, in your church, in your midst, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, before I proceed, I want to give glory to God. I want to give thanks to God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name, we lift you high, we magnify you, we honor you, we worship you. You are wonderful, you are beautiful, you are glorious, you are mighty. There is none like you. You seated in the heavenlies and make the earth your footstool. We thank you for this day. It is a beautiful day that you have made, oh God. Father, Lord, many went to bed yesterday night, but they couldn't wake up this morning. You didn't make that our portion. We thank you for your grace, your love that is unconditional. Thank you, Father, Lord. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. I thank you, O God, for the opportunity even to minister your word, O God. Father, Lord, I pray that you have your way to control. Father, Jehovah, I reduce so that you may increase in me, O God. Take charge of my mouth and speak your word from your throne of grace and mercy. Use me as your clay, O God, and mold me, O God, in the way you want me to be. Father, Lord Almighty, I pray that as the word come out, let it come out with power in the name of Jesus. I pray for the Lord that every hearer of the word shall not only be here alone, they shall be doers well in Jesus' name. At the end of this ministration, Lord, souls shall never be the same again. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. I am so happy to be here with you today, this morning. A beautiful Sunday. I want to sing a song. Okwe lokwe re. Okwe lokwe re. Aye iba ye ye mi. Okwe lokwe re. Father, Lord, we thank you. That we woke up this morning. That we woke up this morning and able to see this beautiful day. It is by his mercy 
and we give him all the glory. Thanksgiving and praises shall never cease in our mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that I have a thanks, I have an interpreter on the line. I want to implore you to um, not be um, angry with me. Sometimes I, I may get carried away. I'm not used to having an interpreter as I minister the word. So I will always try to remember to stop for you to, to interpret. Amen. Thank you so much. The, um, I thank you for this, the, the work of God that you're doing. I pray that your oil shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. The message, my message to you today is Thanksgiving is a seal to uncommon breakthrough. Thanksgiving is a seal to uncommon breakthrough. Your labor and strive to break through and overcome a period of trial, storms, battles, and tribulations of life. As you go through it, um, yes, continue, please. As you go through it, you will encounter so many difficulties. I want to tell you that there is always a test before a testimony. And of course, when you have testimonies, Thanksgiving will follow. Amen? So what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is giving glory to God for his mighty deeds in our lives. You'll find this in the book of Jeremiah 13, 5 to 17. If you are with me, please let us quickly run there. <clears throat> Jeremiah 13, 5 to 17. I, I mean 15, 15 to 17, sorry. I'm going to read. I'm going to read very quickly. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud, the Lord, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he causes darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while you look for light, it turn it into shadow of death and make it gross darkness. For if you not if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and my eyes shall weep so and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. that is to say our god is a jealous god he demands thanksgiving from us for the many deeds and benefits he gives to us daily do you know that breakthrough will manifest powerfully if you give thanks always? The Bible says in the book of Colossians 4 2, it said, Continue in prayer, 
and watch in the same with thanksgiving. That means continue to pray and make your request, but with thanksgiving. Don't cease in giving thanks. Testimony and thanksgiving and praises. They are three jolly friends. They work together. When you have testimony, thanksgiving will follow. And when you have thanksgiving, praises follow. When you see one, you see the other. You see the second, you see the third. Amen. So therefore, praise is the highway to our high places. While thanksgiving confirms and validates our high places. It validates our thanksgiving. It seals our thanksgiving into uncommon testimonies and breakthroughs. God loves us tremendously. He loves us so much that he gave his one and only begotten son. He had God took a Campbell with us. He had no plan B for us. And that's because of the love he has for us. He's ready to, to do with us and supply all our needs at any time. Jeremiah 1 2 says, Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. He's saying that we hasten it. He will perform it exactly as he has spoken and as he has promised. And because he has said this, we have a belief that he's a faithful God and he will always bring it to pass. He will fulfill his word. He will hasten it. He will bring it to pass. So when you are praying, when you are paying your tithes faithfully, and harvest is not coming, then what you need to do is to praise him and give him thanks. What we follow that is supernatural breakthrough. Because you praise him and you give him thanks. Psalm 95 verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. So, we are moving along. Why do we give thanks? Why do we give thanks? I will just give a summary because I know you must have had this a lot of times different reasons so you are used to it by now so i'm just going to run through this quickly one we give thanks because god loves us john 3 16. god loves us with benefits you find that in psalm 100 verse 3 every day Love, 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 love. 
Thanksgiving is a debt we owe God. You find this in Isaiah 9 8. God said he's faithful. If he says it, God will do it. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Once he says it, he will do it. And that's why we give thanks. Let us quickly go into the book of Malachi 2. I'm going to quickly read from verses 1 to 3. If you are there, please, if you are with your Bible, please open it with me. Malachi chapter 2. I'm going to quickly read from verses 1 to 3. And now... And now, O ye priests, this commandment is... And I'm sorry. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it into heart, to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dog. I, the, the, these three verses talk about how God gets, how he displeases God when he does beautiful things for us and we are not giving him thanks. So we give thanks because God commands it. <laughs> Thanksgiving preserve and seal up our miracles. We'll find this in the book of First Thessalonians 5:18. First Thessalonians 5:18. It says, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you." <laughs> Thanksgiving is the vital key to obtaining the promises of God. It is the key to perfection of our blessings. You find this in the book of James 1.17. I read. I read. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning every good gift is from god any beautiful thing you have today is from god when you wake up in the morning it's because of god amen thanksgiving multiplies our blessings you find this in the book of Jeremiah 13, 19. It multiplies. The more we give thanks, the more our blessings multiply. I'm going to read Jeremiah 13, 19. It says, mm -hmm. Jeremiah 13, 19 says, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. As you give thanks, God will multiply you. He will glorify you, and you will not be small. You will be big. You will soar high. In Jesus' name. How do we give thanks? I will just summarize it and say, you give thanks immediately. No, there should be no procrastination. 
you have something good god has done great in your life you wake up in the morning give god thanks open your mouth and praise his name and thank him do not say we thank him tomorrow Pro procrastination can be deadly it can be very 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 deadly when you hold it when you hold off your testimony when you hold off your thanksgiving to god the enemy may creep in and mess it up so you give thanks immediately do not be shy do not hide it from people what god has done in your life so that other people can be encouraged thanksgiving is a ministry of his own amen what stops us from thanksgiving i'm going to summarize it again because i'm sure you've had so many versions and reasons but i will say it is man's on appreciation of god's blessings in our life man do not appreciate what god does to us they look at what he hasn't done they do not look at what he has done already and give thanks <laughs> you feel insatiable you feel that he has not done enough you feel that he you keep complaining when you complain too much when you feel a sense of hopelessness you think that you know your situation is impossible before god all this reason cause man not to give thanks to god when you keep offenses in your heart your heart is grieved you are not able to focus and see the goodness of God in your life. You are so grieved and bitter. You carry bitterness in your heart. You're holding on to the past, past mistakes, past issues. You forget his benefits. This causes man not to give thanks. <laughs> there are three types of thanksgiving there is thanksgiving without vows which is the regular thanksgiving there is thanksgiving with vows and that is also divided into two you can make your vow okay Go ahead before I say the remaining two. I said the first one there is thanksgiving without vows, which is the regular thanksgiving. The second thanksgiving is thanksgiving with vows. And this one also, you can make the vow before uh, and pay the vow before God does it, or you can pay it after God does the miracle. So let's talk about these three types of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving with no vows which is the regular thanksgiving this these are sacrifices of thanksgiving it is done after the miracle has occurred after the, the god has done your desire after something great has happened in your life 
That's when you come out and you bring your sacrifices of thanksgiving unto the Lord. The book of Psalm 107.22 says, Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. One o seven, verse twenty-two. Psalm twenty-six, verse seven says. Psalm twenty-six, verse seven. It says that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. So this is when you gather people and you rejoice to come and rejoice with you for what God has done in your life. He has blessed you. He has de delivered you. He has protected you. He has provided for your needs. God has healed you. He has done marvelous things for you. He has answered your prayers. And then you gather people and you come and proclaim his works and bring your thanksgiving sac uh, sacrifice with dancing and rejoicing. <laughs> Psalm 100 verse 4 says Enter into his gates with thanksgiving And into his courts with praise Be thankful unto, the, unto him And bless his name the second thanksgiving is thanksgiving with vows involved but this one you you decide to pay your vow after God has done the miracle. Psalm 50 verse 14 says, Psalm 50 verse 14, it says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vow unto the Most High God. So at this point, let us ask, what is a vow? According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, a vow is a solemn promise or assertion, specifically one by which a person is bound to an act, service, or condition. I will repeat it again. Webster Dictionary explaining vow says, A vow is a solemn promise. It's a solemn promise. A promise you make when you are calm in your spine, in your spirit. Specifically, one by which a person is bound to an act. You are bound to that act, to that promise, to that vow. <coughs> The 
vow means a solemn promise. It is solemn because it's sacred. It's solemn because you swear by it. You solemn because it's gone even beyond the physical to the spiritual. It can be it can be by one person making a vow. It can be between two people, like husband and wife. It can be between man and God. According to the renowned evangelist Benny, he says. A vow is a promise made to God to do something for God in return for a miracle. Or help we need from him when there is no other way out. The point is you must pay your vow to avoid unpalatable outcome. So this vow, we make it to God when we are at a crossroad. People make vows of thanksgiving when they are facing a situation, when they are in the storms of life, when they are passing through a difficult situation and they want to pull the hands of God and then they go into a vow. When you make this vow, immediately God steps into, the, into it with you and it now becomes a vow between you and God. As you make it to God, God is reciprocating it back to you. So it's between you and God. It is better not to make a vow than to make a vow to God and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. Let us look at the Bible about people that made vows of thanksgiving. These are people that made vows to God that if God does this, they will do this in thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving is a vow. Because of time, I will not be able to read the scripture as I had planned to do it into details. But let us quickly open to the book of 1 Samuel. I will read one or two verses in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'll be reading from verse 10. There is this man called Elkanah. He has two wives, Hannah and Penina. Hannah, Penina has many children. Hannah has no child. They always go to Shiloh every year to worship God and give sacrifices unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
This particular year, they went to Shiloh, the whole family went to Shiloh. And she stayed back to pray unto the Lord. The Bible says in verse 10 of First Samuel chapter 1, verse 10, it says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. This was the vow she made. I read verses 10 and 11 of First Samuel, chapter 1. We all know what happened. There's no need to go into the story in details. While she was praying with bitterness of heart, she was speaking from her heart. Her voice was not coming out. Eli came in and thought she was drunk and even began to, uh, 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 to make statements that was discrediting to her. She bear it. She did not respond in anger to the man of God. She explained to the man of God that she's crying and praying to her God from the bitterness of her heart. So Eli said, Go in peace. I'm reading verse 17. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. That's verse 17. And we know the rest of the story. When, when, when she got home, the following year, she gave back to a child, Samuel. She weaned him for three years, and she brought him back. God answered a miracle, and she brought the child back unto the Lord, as she has vowed and gave it back unto God when the child was three years old. <laughs> If we go to this same first Samuel chapter 2, we will see what God did in return because she fulfilled a vow. First Samuel chapter 2. I'm reading verse 20 and 21. It says, And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, The Lord give the seed of this woman for the loan, which is lent to the Lord. And they went their way. And verse 21 said, And the Lord visited Anna, so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child somewhere grow before the Lord. So because she gave that one child, she asked for only one child. And she promised to bring him back to the Lord in thanksgiving. She fulfilled her vow. And what did God do in return? God gave her five more children. She received multiplication for fulfilling her vow and uh, giving thanks unto God.
we're going to look at is Jephthah, Jephthah's daughter. We're going to look at it from the book of Judges, chapter 11. I'm going to be reading from verse 30. This is the story of Jephthah, a judge of Israel. I'm going to summarize it because of time. He made a foolish vow. Why would I call it a foolish vow? Remember I said that you only make a vow that you know you can fulfill. Do not make a vow that you cannot fulfill. It's more dangerous to make a vow and you don't fulfill it. Jephthah, a judge in Israel, made a foolish vow. And he said to God that if God will give him victory in the upcoming battle against the Ammonites, he will sacrifice whatever comes first out of his door when he comes back home in victory. Jephthah was victorious in the battle against the Ammonites. When Jephthah returned home after the battle, his daughter came to greet him with dancing and rejoicing. Jephthah was devastated and stated that he had made a vow to the Lord that he could not break. Jephthah now sacrificed his daughter in fulfilling his, his vow unto the Lord as a thanksgiving offering unto God for making him win the battle against the Ammonites. I want to make a very important point here before we move on in this story of Jephthah. If we look at Genesis, um, Judges 11, this same chapter that we're reading, Judges 11, I want us to pay attention to chapter 34. Let me read it. And Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. His daughter, his only child, he had no other child apart from her, and he had to sacrifice her to fulfill the vow he made to God that he will use her, whatever comes to meet him when he comes back in, vict in victory as a thanksgiving offering, sacrifice unto the Lord. Say, 
so many of the that is why i said that he made a foolish vow we should be mindful when we are making our vows of thanksgiving unto the lord for what we are asking of the lord <laughs> If we read in the Bible, in the book of Genesis 28, when we have time, we can go home and read it, verse 20 to 22. Jacob made a vow there at Bethel when he was running away from his brother whom he stole his birthright. We are moving on to the third type of Thanksgiving, and this is the Thanksgiving challenge vow. It is the Thanksgiving challenge vow. This Thanksgiving and payment of vow is made before even the request made to God is answered. That is when you bring your Thanksgiving, that vow that you promise God you will do when He does that thing for you, you bring it even before the prayer or the request is answered by God. This is also a very powerful way to move the hand of God. It's very, very powerful because you have now challenged God in that situation. I tell you, God cannot owe any man. He will surely fulfill his own part unfailingly. If an ordinary man like Jephthah can fulfill his vow because he made the vow and he sacrificed his daughter. How much more our God, the all sovereign, in fulfilling his own vow, his own part of that vow, he will do it. If you go to the Bible in the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 18 to 28, I'm not going to read it because of time. You will read the story of how Herod made a vow to his daughter on his birthday. And the daughter died, danced so well for him on his birthday. His heart was so pleased with her. And he made a vow to her to ask whatever she likes. But because John the Baptist, the father of Jesus Christ, has condemned his act for taking the wife of his brother as his own wife, that woman, Herodias, has been angry with John the Baptist for saying that. And when the daughter went to the mother to ask, what should I ask of my father? He has made a vow to me to ask anything. The mother told her to ask for the head of John the Baptist. We all know what's happened in the story. The king had to make, had to make them cut off the head of John the Baptist and gave it to his daughter. <clears throat> because that was his vow. And that was what she asked for. Yeah. 
If a mere mortal, I repeat, can keep to their vow in spite of the inconvenience and the pain it caused them, how much more our God, the Almighty. Every word of God is a vow to us. The Bible is a vow to us. The content is a vow to us. They are all promises of God. When you go through the book of Deuteronomy, you find a lot of promises and vows that God has made to us. All we need to do is to fulfill our own part, and He will fulfill His own part. God in the book of Isaiah 55 verse 11 Isaiah 55 11 it says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. The book of Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should mind, that he should repent. Has he said it, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good and fulfill it? In the book of Matthew 24, verse 35, it says, Matthew 24, verse 35, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will not pass away. And if we go into the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, it shows the will of God for us. It says, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. God is talking to you. God is talking to me. That is the plans he has for you and I, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. That is his will for us. Therefore I say to you, According to the book of Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, 6. It says, be careful for nothing, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving with thanksgiving let your quick request be made known to God Philippians 4 6. I want to tell you that this there is power in thanksgiving. There is power in thanksgiving. Every day, when you have a heart of thanksgiving unto the Lord, the Lord shall be pleased unto you. The Lord will open the heavens unto you, and your prayer request shall be answered speedily. Even, even Jesus used this um, um, uh, 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 power of thanksgiving in his ministry because of time i will not read it but i'll refer you to the passage please put down matthew 14 18 to 21 matthew 14 18 to 21 this is the miracle of the five loaves <clears throat> the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fishes let me quickly go there and see if I can read a few passages for you there. Matthew chapter 14. And this is Jesus Christ speaking to them. I read. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. This was when he had gone, when he was, he, he preached to the multitude. And uh, there were many people, they refused to go home because they wanted to hear him. To hear the word of God. And they were there for many hours. And he was, uh, and he felt uh, pity for them because he knew they were hungry. So. They found there was no food. And he had his disciples to look for food. They, they, they only found a boy that had just three, uh, 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 five loaves of bread and two fishes. And he said, bring it to me. So I read Matthew 14 from verses 18 to 21. He said, bring them here to me. He said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. He taking the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. <clears throat> and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. I want you to take note of that. When, when, when thanksgiving is put for, forward first, a miracle follows immediately. So I, I continue reading. He said, Taking the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and they gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up, after everybody ate, they picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men. That is beside the women and children. In those days, they don't count women and children. They just count men alone. So there were about 5,000 men. Imagine how many women that were there. You know, women are always many more than men. When we have religious uh, gathering, when we when at religious place, uh, places, women are more spiritual. They, pro they are tend to us being there than the men. When you enter any church, you find more women than men. So if God, if Christ fed 5,000 men here, imagine how many women were there. And they all ate just from five loaves of bread and two fishes. 
They all ate, they were well fed, and there were still 12 baskets left over. When Thanksgiving goes forward, a miracle follows. Like I said, Jesus Christ knows the secret of thanksgiving and he used it a lot in his ministry. Look at when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. Let us quickly open our Bible to John 11. John 11. I'll be reading verse 35, just a few verses there because of time. John 11. Please, op let's open our Bible to the book of John 11. And Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, was dead. I'm not, I, I want to, let me just summarize it first. He was dead. And they called for Jesus, but he came after four days. By that time, Lazarus was buried and was already stinking in the tomb. But when he came, uh, verse 35 of that chapter says, Jesus wept. That means it touched him, it pained him in his heart. He had feelings. He felt the pain of Lazarus' death. This is very dead. If they are uh, Lazarus, we are not here. That is why the Jesus Verse 39 record that Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Master, the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had, he had been dead four days. In verse 39. And verse 40 records, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee? That if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God. And verse 41 says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. They took away the stone where the dead where from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He thanked the Lord first. In the presence of everybody, he gave him a, a thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, even before the miracle happened. 
he gave him that thanksgiving. He, he thanked the Lord. He said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I continue reading verse 42, 43, and 44. It says, And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast heard me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And verse 44 records, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. <laughs> I declare unto you today, this morning, that every stone that is blocking your breakthrough, every stone that is blocking your greatness, that is blocking your next level, that is blocking your increase, that is blocking your joy, your peace, that is blocking your health. I command it to be removed now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I decree whatever may be declared dead in your life is it your business is it your womb is it what you aspire for is it your children is it anything that is not growing I declare because the Bible says here that they removed the stone and he that was dead came forth. I decree and I declare, let that womb come alive now in the name of Jesus. Let everything that is dead in your life now come alive in the name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Arise and come alive in the name of Jesus. And I decree, because the said, lose him and let him go. Anything holding you captive, Anything holding you bound, I command you to lose you now and let you go. In the name of Jesus, today you shall not see any of them again. Today is the last day because of the thanksgiving that you are giving unto the Lord today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know. I hope they told you people to bring your prayer, uh, your the, the two sheets of paper. On one hand, you will have your three prayer requests, and on the other hand, I want you to have your vow, your vow that you're gonna pay unto God when that prayer request is made. You may decide to pay the vow before it is uh, the prayer request is answered, or you may decide to pay it after it is answered. It is your decision. But whatever decision you're making today, I declare to you that the Lord is meeting you at the point of your needs to, right now. In the name of Jesus. Do you have your prayer request in your hand? If you have it in your hand, I want you to raise it up. Rainbow If you have that prayer request in your hand, I don't know what challenges or storms of life you are facing. 
I don't know what storms, what challenges, what trauma you are facing in your life right now. Raise up that prayer request in your hands. I want you to begin to speak to it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That situation, that tribulation, that trauma, that pain, that sickness, that reproach, that lack. Hear the word of the Lord. Let the ground open up and swallow you up. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I decree to every prayer request in that paper right now. Father Lord, I bring that before thee. Your children have brought their prayer request. This is their ninth week of thanksgiving unto you. I decree and I declare, Lord, that every prayer request, let it be have answered now in the name of Jesus. I declare heaven's open unto those prayer requests. Yes, the angel of the Lord is collecting it. He's submitting it unto the Lord. Heavens are open unto that prayer request as you hold it in your hands. Lord is answering every prayer request. Every locked door is beginning to open unto you right now. Every dead thing is beginning to come alive in your life right now. Is it a son? Do you have children that are not listening to you? God is arresting their hearts right now. Do you have a business that is not flourishing? God is bringing it alive in your life right now. It will begin to yield profit in the name of Jesus. I speak to that prayer request. You are answered. You are answered in the name of Jesus. They have brought this prayer request before the Lord. They are not going back home with this problem. The people that are not, you are not going back home with this problem. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. I want you all to gather that prayer request. And I want you... To submit it unto your pastor. I want you to submit it unto your pastor. Because he will keep it. As a thanksgiving. He shall be your source of thanksgiving. He shall be your memory. Your record of thanksgiving. Because you will come back to give thanks unto it. Because they will all be answered in the name of Jesus. They will all be answered in the name of Jesus. I speak life to that prayer request. I speak life to that prayer request. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the power that resurrected Christ from dead. Let it fall upon you now and heal every part of your body. Everyone that is sick, you are not going home with that sickness. From today in the name of Jesus. You are healed in your body, your spirit, and your soul. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every arrow of the enemy are sent back to the ascender. In the name of Jesus, you will live, you will not die. You will declare the works of God in this land of the living. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will celebrate you. The Lord will encompass around you. No weapon, you know, evil shall defy you. Thousands shall fall at this, your side. Ten thousand at your right side, they will not come near you. I declare and I declare unto you that you will not fall sick. Coronavirus will not locate your abode in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to raise up the hand where you have your vows. I want you to raise the hand where you have your vows, the paper that you've written your vows. Make sure that it is the vow that you can pay unto the Lord. Do not make vows that you cannot pay. Do not make vows that you cannot pay. Make sure there is a vow that you can pay. It could be a deprivation. It could be depriving yourself from something. Like for me, I love coffee. So when you, I can decide to make a vow that I will not drink coffee for like six months or for like three months. It could be anything. Begin to make that vow. That promise unto the Lord. You can write an IOU on your paper. If you do not have it now, you can write an IOU on your paper. And make that vow. Now, let us go further. If you have the means of paying the vow today, and you decide that you want to pay it, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. If you can pay the vow today, please go ahead and pay it. Because you are challenging God. You are 
are giving God thanksgiving in advance. You are giving God thanksgiving in advance. You are telling God that you know that he can do it. Because he did it before. He did it before. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He changed not. He has healed the sick. He has opened the eyes of the blind. He has made the lame to walk. What can he not do? The Bible says nothing shall be impossible for him. You begin to write down your vows. And if you can pay it, I want you to pay it now. In the name of Jesus. If you cannot pay it, do an IOU. Write an IOU on that vow. Write an IOU on that vow. Tell the Lord that if you do this thing for me, these three requests that I have made unto you, when you do it for me, oh God, I'm coming back with this thanksgiving. I am making this vow today. Make that vow. Make that vow. Make that vow. In the name of Jesus. Now you can gather the vows together. I want you to collect it together. And I want you to submit it to your pastor. I want you to submit the vows to your pastor. I want you to gather the vows together and submit it to your pastor. I want you to commit the vows together and submit it to your pastor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I want to give you my testimony. What I'm asking you to do today, it is not by mistake. What I'm asking you to do today, I have practiced it before. I have tested the Lord before. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Please, let's be seated. I want to share my testimony with you of what God has done in my life. If the interpreter is there, please, you can help me to interpret as well. If the interpreter is there, please, you can help me to interpret as well. I want to share my testimony. I want to share my testimony. I have a daughter. I have a daughter at the age of three years old. At the age of three years old, my daughter developed a great sickness. They call it a, a, a tum brain tumor. They call it brain tumor. And because of that tumor, she became paralyzed. She could not walk again. And when she became paralyzed, all of a child that was walking before and running, very sharp child, she suddenly could not walk again. I took her to the hospital. And when the doctor looked at her, they said that she had brain tumor. And that it has affected her that she can never walk again. That she will not be able to talk again. That she will just be a vegetable, and that she will not uh, that uh, th that she will not live long, and that she, uh, uh, enemy will die very soon. They said there is nothing that they can do. That the brain tumor has already affected every nerve, every ability to walk, to talk, and everything. But I decided, I told the doctor, I said, that is your report. It is not the report of the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? I, I will believe the report of the Lord. We were admitted in the hospital for about one and a half years. This story I'm telling you about your pastor, Pastor Sunday, okay? knows 
about this story. He was with me in the journey. He was by my side during the journey of this of this a uh, 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 great tribulation with my daughter. He was praying along with me in faith. You are talking about yes, your pastor, Pastor Sunday. Okay, he was he was there. We went into prayer and fasting. We went into dry fasting. We were imploring of the Lord, crying unto God that this child must not die. So, I decided to give God a challenge. I did the third type of thanksgiving. I made a vow. I made a vow that pinched me. A, a vow that that made me sweat to pay it. And I said to God that if you will heal my daughter and she will and she does not die, I will bring this certain amount unto you as thanksgiving offering. Now, the money I'm talking about that I brought before the Lord, it was not a small money at all. It is a money that if you had me at that time, you would have thought I had I was crazy. You will ask me where will I get such a money? It's like somebody saying that they will pay two million to God if God did it. I'm not asking you to make such a vow. Make vow that is convenient for you. I made that vow, even though I did not have the money. But by faith, the money came. And I ran and I gave the money to God. I said, God, here is my passion, my part. I am paying it. Now it's left for you to do your part. I'm waiting for your part. <laughs> So I took the money, I paid my vow. And because I paid my vow, and I know that God is faithful to do exceedingly abundantly above that which he had promised. I waited on the on God. I waited on promise of God for the healing of my daughter. People came to me and told me, take her to Baba, take her to Ijebu, take her to Kogbe, Egbe. take her to go, 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 Wahala. take her to the most powerful man in the village, take her to this place, take her to that place. I said, no, I'll rather wait on the Lord, the author and the finisher of my faith. He is faithful. The Bible says he has never failed and he will never fail me. He is a God that specializes in the impossibilities of man. Now, 
After two years in the hospital, and she she had about eight surgeries in her brain. They opened up her brain. They did some surgeries there. After two years, they re discharged us and said we should go. But the, the doctor said, don't forget, we already told you. Even though we did the surgery, everything is already damaged. She cannot walk again. She cannot talk again. At that time, my child was just three years old. And I took my child. I said, I believe in the report of the Lord. I went home with my child. They gave me three months to bring the child back for checkup. We left the hospital on May 8, 2018. Uh, sorry, two, 2000, uh, in the year um, 19, 19, sorry, 1998, yes. In the year 1998, May 8, May 8, I went home from hospital with my child after two years in the hospital. <laughs> one day just before the three months was up my daughter where we always put her on the chair there's a chair that we clip her on and she will just be there just one day one day on august august 28 that same year, 1998, uh, 1998, just three months, just three months after we got home, this child, I was in the room praying, I was in the room praying for her, and she just got up from her seat, and she began to come to me where I was praying in the room. I, I could not, I, I, I could not scream. I, I could not, even though I was praying it, I could not believe my eyes. She walked to me. That is the power of God. He fulfilled his part. He did not only to fulfill his part. I will continue. <laughs> God told me already that he will not only restore her back, but through her, he will draw men unto him. And he fulfilled that part also. Because on the, on, 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 after three months, when I took her to hospital in UCH in Nigeria, when she was coming for her first checkup, and she was walking slowly, taking that slow step, like a little child that just started walking. She was walking. All the nurses that are taking care of her for two years in the hospital, they saw her on, on the path coming towards the office. They screamed. They could not believe their eyes. They went to call all the nurses in the world to come and see my daughter. Come and see her. She's walking. They called the doctor that did the operation. All the doctors, there were about four or five doctors that did her surgeries that said that she cannot walk again. They all ran out of the office on the street. People gathered together to look at what everybody's looking at. They were looking at the miracle of God. They saw her walking and they said, this is God. They gave their life to Christ that day. Well, 
Many gave their lives to Jesus on that day. Many gave their lives. They said, this is, this is God. Even the doctors, he said, I now believe in the power of Christ. That Christ is real now, I believe. Because of that, the God that did it for me, and, and I've shared this with you, and I'm telling you also that you too can have the same testimony. So I speak to all the situations of your life that they will move, they will give way, and testimony shall abound. You will come back and testify. Likewise, like I, that I, as, as I testified concerning my daughter till today, I still speak about her everywhere I go. Likewise, so you will do so concerning every situation you are praying about in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. I decree and I declare unto you today. I command every reproach in your life to turn to joy. I command every cause of shame and disgrace and ridicule in your life to be converted to a source of miracle and thanksgiving. Let every spirit of Herod in your life be disgraced and shamed openly in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit of Goliath receive the stones of fire and perish in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit of Pharaoh all perish in the rest now in the name of Jesus. Can I command your rest to begin to part now? And you are moving to your promised land from today in the name of Jesus. Let the power of resurrection that raised Christ from dead rest, resurrect everything dead in your life and heal you completely in Jesus' name. I release your blessings from every corner of the world, of the earth, unto you in Jesus' name. This week, I connect you all with your helpers of destiny. In the name of Jesus. Rise and begin to do express from the, for the Lord from today on in Jesus' name. Finally, I want to leave you. I want to leave you. I want you to leave you with this. Today, because you have written your three prayer requests. Today, because you have believed. Today, because you have made a vow. I want you to go a step further. I want you to buy a Thanksgiving dress. It does not have to be an expensive dress. It could be a very cheap one. It could be a little shirt, a little trouser, a little blouse, something you have not worn before. Hang it in your wardrobe. Write on it, my testimony dress. Put it in your wardrobe. You will wear their dress for your Thanksgiving concerning this trip. This prayer request you have made today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As a people, please come and pray for our first minister for today. As a people, pray for our first minister. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will be there. I'm coming home next month. I will visit you, sir. Okay. I'm coming home in the month of September. Thanks for the anticipated Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all.